down here too. All right, well, thank you for joining us here at the Tennessee Aquarium for a special Holidays Under the Peaks themed live. We are going to be visiting with our giant Pacific octopus, but before we do that, we're gonna visit with one of our homo sapiens, Danny Alexander. Danny is one of our senior aquarists here at the aquarium, and those of you who have joined us for these live streams before are probably pretty familiar with Danny. Danny has helped us out on quite a few of them, so Danny, thank you very much for making this round, what, four or five for this year, it feels like. Seems like it, Casey, but I always love doing it, especially when it's this animal here. And we always get lots of good participation from you guys whenever we're doing it, especially the octopus. All right. Well, uh, before we kick, up, kick things off, some of you may have noticed that we do have a donate button on this live stream. That is to raise money for our emergency operations fund. Like a lot of other organizations, this has been a pretty difficult year for us, but that emergency operations fund helps us to make sure that the animals continue receiving that same level of care that we are, I think, rightfully lauded for. Uh, and to kind of uh, show your support for the Tennessee Aquarium and the work that we do in bringing you a connection with the wide and wonderful world of nature. So, uh, Danny, we'll go ahead and kick things off by, uh, I guess, discussing what you will be doing with Tabasco with Tabasco, which is the name of our octopus, and uh, what people can kind of expect to see. Okay, so each day we try to, as we call it, enrich the octopuses. And in the husbandry world, uh, a lot of animals, they need enrichment, which helps keep them healthy and interested in the environment that uh, they may be kept in. So we are going to enrich Tabasco. We're gonna interact with him. We've got, uh, we've got a number of things that we let him have uh, periodically. We usually don't give him more than one thing each day. Sometimes we can. But today we're actually going to let him have something he's never had before. And that's a uh, homemade Christmas item. And so we have this Christmas tree. And you guys will see it here in a little bit. And it actually has jars incorporated with it. And so we're going to give him a Christmas tree, put food in a jar that is uh, attached to this Christmas tree. And he probably won't let us see him get the food out of the jar, but at least you guys will see us give him a toy he's never had before. So even though, uh, presumably, Tabasco is not aware that it is in fact the holiday season, he is still going to get some fun Christmas or holiday time enrichment. Oh yes, yes. Uh, this is a good time of year just to give him something a little different. He's never handled this thing. The shape is totally different from anything we've ever given him. And so it'll be interesting to see how he reacts to it uh, when we hand it to him. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, some of you may be wondering where exactly we are. We're actually behind the scenes of the Boneless Beauties Gallery. And uh, this uh, platform is how Danny and other aquarists access the tank. Now, Danny is not the only one who treats uh, or deals with our giant Pacific octopus. I think you're probably, he would be considered our primary care provider for the octopus. Yeah, uh, especially the one on exhibit, but Cheryl also is very involved, and she usually takes care of octopuses when we first get them in what we call as our quarantine room. So that'd be Cheryl Crossley, one of our other senior aquarists. Yes. Yeah. So she has a new one in the quarantine room right now that we just got last week. Now, where did uh, where where do we get octopuses from? Because it's not like something you can just order out of the Sears catalog. Well, octopuses, uh, their habitat is basically in the Pacific Ocean. So we have a collector that we have been dealing with for years in Vancouver, British Columbia, and we just contact them and say we'd be interested in getting a new young octopus and there's plenty of uh, octopuses in the Pacific Ocean. Um, they're not endangered or threatened and uh, they can just go out and catch us a uh, giant Pacific octopus and they are shipped very gently and safely uh, to us. Uh, they come and they take a flight. And the last one we got last week took a direct flight. Uh, from the west coast to Atlanta, where we went and picked up, picked him up. Wow. So, now, 
That, what are they? What are they like to work with? Because you you have worked with them for quite a long time, so I feel like you probably know better than a lot of people. Uh, certainly, anybody who's watching, what it, what an octopus is like to work with, because they're kind of renowned for being, among other things, pretty intelligent. Oh yes, very intelligent. Uh, you know, they say that uh, they can actually get to recognize their keepers. Now they live short lives, so they only live three to five years. But uh, I have known a number of these octopuses that seem to uh, uh, respond better to me or to someone who's been working with them for a while, Cheryl included. She works with them a lot also. Octopus whisperers. Yeah. And so uh, we've had interns that have come and the octopuses wouldn't even come up when we had an intern there. But then it, on the other hand, we've had some octopuses that came right over. So octopuses are very smart, they're intelligent, and they have different personalities. Some are more sociable than others. So there's a lot of things about octopuses that are very much like, uh, like having a pet dog, or a cat, or a cross between the two. Some describe octopuses as a cross between a dog and a cat. <laughs> well, that's a new one for me. but. Uh... Before we, uh, we get a little bit better acquainted with Tabasco, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge that we have actually received a donation. Uh, I think Gene Kelly is the one who donated. Thank you very much for that donation, Dean, Gene. Sorry. Uh, and, I, and also, we have a, a comment from Fabian Hanley who says, I would donate, but I have no money, but I would if I did. Sorry. There is absolutely no reason for you to feel sorry, Fabian. Uh, those donations yeah. are completely... Uh, of your own free will, they're not in any way obligatory. We're just glad that you could join us, you and everyone else who is here for this stream, as we can give you some insights into some incredible animals that you would probably not see were it not for places like the Tennessee Aquarium. So, uh, Danny, Tabasco, you have been working with Tabasco, uh, for Tabasco about a year. for a year. So, this exhibit for about a year. So, Cheryl worked with him when he was in our other facility or in our other building in the quarantine room. And so he's been on exhibit with me working with him primarily for about a year. So how would you describe Tabasco's temperament and personality? I usually describe it each day we have to record or put our, our thoughts down about uh, his behavior. Generally, I say he's very social. Once we open up the access doors, as we did today, to, to uh, um, interact with him, he, uh, he's actually moving around. He hasn't come right over, but he's actually slowly working his way over here. Now, sometimes he comes directly over. He jets over here uh, like, a, I don't know, like a locomotive. He just fires his way right over to us. Today, he just kind of slowly easing his way over. Maybe it's because Casey's here. I don't know. He's uncomfortable but, around me, I guess. But he is coming over slow but sure. And if I reach out and touch him, that gets his interest. And uh, he might just come on over here in just a second. Now, you're seeing one of the coolest things about octopuses, which is those suckers, which, believe it or not, I'm pretty sure that's actually what they're called. They are called suckers. And they have more than 2,000 of them. They have more than 200 on each of their eight arms. And those are called arms. Some like to call them tentacles, but it's more appropriate to call them arms. Now, uh, cuttlefish and squid are related to octopuses. And cuttlefish actually have eight arms also, but those arms do not have suction cups on them. But they, uh, cuttlefish have two um, feeding tentacles. They do have two feeding tentacles that do have suction cups right at the end. So that's a big difference between cuttlefish and octopuses is that cuttlefish's arms do not have suction cups, but cuttlefish have two feeding tentacles that do have suction cups. They're pretty cool. So the, the way that it works, as I understand it, is that they create a pressure difference between what's inside the, the suction cup and what's outside. And that grip, as you can see, is extraordinarily strong. I mean, yeah. Danny, you're, you're the one experiencing it. So how would you liken the strength of that, that suction <laughs> power? It's almost her full, his full weight, which right now he probably weighs close to 30 pounds, maybe 25 pounds. 
And so that's almost the equivalent of 25 pound weight. And he's able with one arm to exert that much force and strength uh, that he can hold his own weight with one arm. I can't hardly pick him up, but he's holding on to the sides of the wall. So it's like we're playing tug of war. <laughs> And we're using his arm as the tug of war. <laughs> and what? Uh, and since you're the one who has who has felt him, obviously you touched him earlier. What does the skin of an octopus feel like? Oh, uh, it's real smooth and slick, and almost slimy. I would say it's almost got a slimy film and and feel to it. That is the first time in four years that I've touched an octopus. That is an interesting sensation, I will oh, say that. Casey, I didn't know that. I know, I'm, I'm uh, getting some new experiences here. All right, so now, the water is very cold. This water is 50 degrees, so it's very cold, and so is the octopus's, uh, uh, the skin feels very cold also, just as cold as the water in the tank. Now, Danny, uh, it looks like he is making his way out of the tank. Is that something that you should be worried about? Because no. that is something that octopuses have been uh, notorious for doing in yeah, other institutions. Yeah. But as long as we're right here, uh, I know it's very easy to flip him right back in again. So yeah, he's a little bit rambunctious right now. As you can see, he would be willing to come on out of the tank. So I'm gonna have to uh, intervene and put him back in again. So come on, Tabasco. Back in you go, buddy. Now, now, those of you who are watching undoubtedly have questions, uh, just it, not only because of what you're seeing, but because octopuses are just such fascinating, fascinating animals. So uh, be sure to direct any cephalopod-related questions to the comments, and I'll, I'll pass them on to Danny as they come in. But uh, yeah. Danny is doing his best to get Tabasco here back, oh, he, back, in, the, back he, in the habitat. He honestly has never wanted to come out this, uh, this strongly before. Uh, he's really determined to come out, but with me here, there's no danger of him coming out or falling down onto the, the decking down here. I'll just wait it out with him. I did not realize, Danny, by the way, that I would be in the splash zone uh, for this live. Oh, yes, Casey. This is an exciting, exciting place to be here on a Friday afternoon in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And uh, so every once in a while, Tabasco has been known to jet water in our direction, so we got to be careful. He has uh, one part of his body called a siphon. Can you point that out? I, I can't see it. Oh, there it is right there. He has a siphon that's like a funnel or a tube, and he takes water in over his gills. He, ha uh, he has gills so that he can breathe. His gills can actually get water or oxygen out of the water. So he takes water in over his gills, jets it out of the siphon and that's how they move through the open ocean when they have a lot of room they can jet water out of that siphon and move through the water like a jet ski just as fast as it can go but in a small tank like this sometimes they just jet water out uh, well just i don't know maybe it's like a form of exercise <laughs> but they really don't move when they do that so he's flexing on you kind of yes but sometimes they'll just jet water at us, just like when they're done with their enrichment and they're ready to move on. Sometimes they'll just show us that by jetting water at us, and sometimes we've gotten soaking wet. <laughs> uh, Tony Mogling, uh, and I probably have mispronounced that, and if so, Tony, I am very sorry, but uh, that is par for the course when it comes to these lives that I will mispronounce and butcher last names. However, I'm fairly confident that first name is Tony. But Tony would like to know, He's not always red. How and why does he change colors? Well, they have special skin cells. And they're special skin cells um, that, that they can manipulate those skin cells to uh, give them that color change. They're called chromatophores. They're called chromatophores. <laughs> and then there's another part of the chromatophores called iridophores. And uh, they are able to manipulate those cells in order to create the color change. And they can do that instantaneously. Like a tenth of a second, they can change color or shade. Some octopuses are better than others. Cuttlefish are even better than octopuses at changing the colors and giving patterns. Cuttlefish are well known for being able to put different patterns on their skin. And that is fascinating. And another thing that you're probably not able to necessarily see, but which Tabasco is conveniently 
sort of presenting to us, even though, you, again, you can't oh. see it, is the, the beak. Now, on the inside, yeah. yeah. Which the beak would be right here in the center, where all the arms uh, emerge from the very center point. That's where the beak is. And the beak is just like a bird's beak or a parrot. Uh, I would venture to say Tabasco's beak, with his size, um, would be a force to be reckoned with. I would not want my hands to get close to that area and tempt Tabasco to sample my fingers. <laughs> Danny, how many pairs of gloves do you go through in the course of <laughs> the average week of working with Tabasco? <laughs> oh, probably a couple of two or three pairs a day anyway. Wow. Yeah, he's got a good grip. <laughs> he gets a good grip on these gloves. <laughs> Be Becky Burns uh, had another question, which is, I have read that they are smart. Has Tabasco done anything particularly clever? Well, we give them different things, like jars with lids, but we do that with all the octopuses. We don't have that many different puzzles and things to give them. We can give them Mr. Potato Heads, too. Now, they're good at taking Mr. B Potato Head apart. But as far as putting arms and things back in place on Mr. Potato Head, I really haven't seen that. Now, we're waiting for the octopus that can put a Mr. Potato Head together instead of just destroying it. Be on par with my kids if he can do that. <laughs> All right, so uh, Danny, speaking of uh, putting things in that are enriching for the octopus, you did mention at the start of this uh, pod uh, podcast, at the po start of this live stream, that you would be giving Tabasco some enrichment. So should we go ahead and, and do that if you can free yourself? Well, actually, I'll show you the food that's gonna be a part of this enrichment first. And you guys, most of y'all that have seen this before with either Casey and I or Shannon and I, um, we show you guys some food and you guys can venture some uh, guesses as to what it looks like to you. So we'll do that right quick. I have the food right over here. Look at Danny. He's well prepared. All the way, all the way up here on the platform already. I got Tabasco's TV dinner right here. Here is Tabasco's TV dinner. So you guys should know what a couple of these things are. Uh, I'll start with the easy stuff first. I think you guys can tell what that is. You all would eat that, I am sure. All right, so type your, your guesses down in the comments. And if you've done this before, maybe let somebody uh, who's never been part, privy to one of these contests uh, type their guess in first. So what do you think, what do you think that is? Now there is a delay on the stream, so it may be a few seconds before they're able to respond. Meanwhile, uh, Danny, if you'll go on, we'll uh, come okay. back to that one while people put their guesses in. Well, this is obviously a fish. I think most of y'all can figure that out. This is called a capelin, and we use it for a number of our aquatic animals, but it's the main diet for the penguins, believe it or not. So capelin is the main diet for the penguins. But we borrow a little bit of food from the penguins. They're very gracious and use some uh, for our marine animals, uh, our aquatic animals also. All right, we do have some guesses coming in, and yes, in fact, that was a shrimp. Good Yay, guess. Hey, good job. And, and yes, the next one would be a cape one. Now, this is uh, an interesting one. Yes, you guys, some of y'all have probably eaten this one too. This is actually related to Tabasco. He's going <laughs> to eat one of his distant relatives right here. <laughs> All right, what does that look like? I mean, Tabasco says that looks like lunch. Uh, yeah, Tabasco's all ready, man. He is ready to eat his TV dinner. Uh, Dino Sirius says, uh, says an eel. My mom guesses a squid. Yay! So it looks like my mom is right. Yes, that, yeah. is, that is in fact a squid. Very good. Now, what other animals here at the aquarium would eat squid? Who, who, prefer, who likes to eat squid? Well, we can chop squid up into different sizes and feed it to just about anything. Most of our larger fish would eat it this size, our big fish would, and smaller fish we could just cut squid up. So we could give squid to just about any of our marine fish. Ooh. 
All right, so one cephalopod for another cephalopod. So yeah. this is our final, uh, I guess, bit of yeah. food for today. This is a hard one, so. This is a hard one, but believe it or not, this is distantly related to the octopus also. Now this one is hard. Now while you're typing your guesses, and I'll go ahead and respond to Fabian Hanley who asks, how many squids do you have? We actually don't have any squid on exhibit right now. We do, however, have Two fish. two giant Pacific octopuses, oh, and yeah. and we do have, as Danny just said, uh, common cuttlefishes, I believe. Yes, common so, cuttlefish. Yes. All right. So, any guesses as to what Danny is holding? It's got a little pointy end to it too. And Tabasco has decided to wait until we're able to give him the food to <laughs> to come back up. Yeah, Tabasco got bored, and so he went to the bottom for the moment. Ah, so my mom guessed it, ventures to guess this time that it's a cuttlefish. No, that is not a cuttlefish. That's a good guess, though. It comes in a shell. It doesn't have a shell, but it comes in a shell. So this is the naked version of something that you would uh, you would probably recognize instantly if it, if you were to see it prior to its becoming a food item for other animals. Yeah, a shell that can open and close. All right, I feel like now may be a time to go ahead and tell everybody what it is, Dane. So what is that? That would be a clam. So any of y'all that were thinking clam, there you go. Not only is it a clam, it's a clam, we call it a clam tongue. Yes, they, they're shipped as clam tongues. And Tabasco is ready for that. It looks like he came up, he decided <laughs> that clam tongues were worth uh, rising up for. Now, Danny, actually, I have a, I do, I have a question for my own edification. Oh. Why uh, is it okay for Tabasco to be up here where he's kind of out of the water? Is that not bad for him? Well, can, he, can he breathe? Octopuses cannot breathe out of water, but uh, since they're a little different than fish, traditional fish, they can stay out of water longer than a fish can uh, because there are stories, and you guys can look them up on the Internet, of octopuses at different facilities, maybe leaving one tank and going to another and getting something to eat and then going back to their original tank. I don't know whether that's folklore or fact, but that's something that I've heard. And uh, you'll see uh, videos of them crawling across a boat. A fish can't crawl across a boat or even flop across a boat. But octopuses can uh, be out of water for a longer length of time than a fish. Not very long, but it is definitely longer than most fish. Now these guys, uh, we are we are feeding him food that obviously he is not having to chase down. However, in the wild, they are actually uh, pretty crafty predators. Oh yes, they are. They can hide out. They can camouflage. Uh, they can even shoot jets of ink and hide in the ink themselves, but a lot of times they'll ink to distract predators that might be chasing them too. So uh, they like crabs and shrimp and, and mussels uh, in the ocean. Uh, just some of them like some of the things that we're feeding them here. Hmm. And I'm actually putting the food in a jar that's attached to this homemade Christmas tree. And he's never had this Christmas tree before. This is his first Christmas on exhibit. And so I'm gonna kind of put the lid and screw the lid on a little bit here. So he's gonna have to work at this to get this off. We won't be able to see it because once I give it to him, he's just gonna cover it up and he'll be uh, exploring this for a little while. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him this Christmas tree and we'll see uh, how he handles it. Come here, Tabasco. Here's your Christmas tree. Now, while, while you're giving Tabasco his Christmas tree, Stephanie Jones would like to know, uh, you did discuss this earlier, but that's okay. We're going to catch people up if they are joining later. Would, uh, Stephanie would like to know, how long do octopuses tend to live? Giant Pacific octopuses live three to five years. Okay. Now, there's 300 different species of octopuses, and uh, I don't know how much uh, many of the other octopuses live, but giant Pacific octopuses live between three and five years. Now, Danny, normally when we do this, it seems like uh, the jar disappears pretty quickly and he kind of surrounds it. This is the longest I've ever been able to actually watch it. Yeah, because he can't reach around, he can't close in on this because of how big his Christmas tree is. He can't just cover it up. Now, speaking of big, 
This is fascinating to watch. I hope you all are enjoying this as much as I am, because this is really cool to watch. Um, but speaking of big, uh, the name implies, obviously, that uh, these guys can get pretty big. And 25 pounds, you said earlier, is about how much Tabasco weighs. But in yeah. the wild, how large could a giant Pacific octopus get? In the get? wild, the average is about between 40 and 60 pounds in the wild, with an arm span, an arm reach of about 15 feet in the wild. 15 feet, wow. 15 That's feet So more than twice as tall as you are then. Oh, yes, yes. So a record that I've seen on the internet is a 600 pound octopus with a 30 foot reach from tip to tip. Now that's just what I have read at different sites on the internet that said there is a record of a 600 pound octopus, giant Pacific octopus with a 30 foot uh, arm spread from one tip to the next. So that's hard for me to imagine a 600 pound octopus because just wrestling with this 25 or 30 pound octopus, I can't imagine 600 pounds. I would be terrified. <laughs> All right. This is, now does he have it open? I can't actually tell. Uh, hey, he's got it open. He opened the jar. So he's probably working on eating that food now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, Becky Burns, I'm going to guess is Becky's name and how it's pronounced. I could be wrong, but it says, this is awesome. Thanks, Tennessee Aquarium. Well, thank you, Becky. Thank you to all of you who have joined us here for this uh, special Holidays Under the Peaks uh, live stream. This is, uh, it's always cool to get a chance to go back behind the scenes and especially to go back behind the scenes with... Uh, octopus just because it seems like no matter how many times we have this discussion Danny and we have done this a couple of times already this year yeah there are just so many things about octopuses that are so fascinating that it feels like we could basically do one of these a day and probably just barely scratch the surface of some of the cool things that uh, kind of set them apart yes I wish we could we haven't even talked about uh, how many brains they have or how many hearts they have oh yeah we haven't okay that's the other unusual thing about octopuses is uh, their anatomy Yes, they do have three hearts. They have two hearts that supply their gills that I told you about earlier, that their gills that they have to have to breathe. So they have hearts that supply blood to their gills. And then they have one central heart for everything else to distribute blood through the rest of their body. <clears throat> so they have three hearts and they have uh, they have, actually have a little bit of copper in their blood, so their blood's a little bit different color too. I have not seen really uh, the octopus's blood being blue, but uh, that's what the internet says, that they have blue blood because they have hemocyanin, I believe, and you know, we have hemoglobin, <coughs> which has iron in it. They have hemocyanin that has copper in it, so, and so we, oh, brains. Oh, yeah, their brain. Because yes, I'm looking at, brain. I'm looking at these tentacles, and that's one of the cool things about their brains is that their their weird brain is actually the way that they're able to move all these arms. Yes, because uh, any suction cup that you touch, that they can control that individual suction cup, and they have more than two thousand suction cups. They can control each individual suction cup. So they actually have one central brain. And then, believe it or not, each arm has its own equivalent of a brain, so that each arm uh, can be controlled by its own individual brain. That's why they're able to control each individual suction cup when there's more than 2,000 suction cups. That's pretty incredible. For anybody who's ever wished that they were, they were typing, maybe, and they had more fingers than they actually have uh, an octopus, if each of those were fingers, would be able to type pretty fast. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so that's amazing, you know, because they can be multitasking. They have eight arms. They can be doing different things with each arm uh, if, if the opportunity presented itself. It's hard for us, you know, to do two different things with two different arms. So imagine an octopus being able to do something different at the same time with each arm. Now, it... it 
behooves me, I think, to take a moment to acknowledge that uh, as we have been talking today, we've had a couple of more donations come in, a couple of them that were uh, pretty substantial. Thank you so much. Uh, it looks like my mom may have donated. And then uh, let me check the name, Linda Walra, who may be related to one of our uh, one of our husbandry staff, I'm guessing, if I had to guess. But regardless, thank you so much to both of you. Yeah. For donating, again, that money that you see, the donate button at the bottom of your screen, does contribute to our Emergency Operations Fund, which was established earlier this year at the start of, well, we'll just call them the troubles, <laughs> the, the pandemic troubles, uh, to help us kind of offset the fact that, you know, this has financially been a difficult year for a lot of places, for most of us, but uh, nonprofits, especially tourism nonprofits, have been hit pretty hard. So this is a, a way for us to kind of offset the cost of, caring for the animals, they would continue to receive the same level of care regardless, but it does help us kind of defray that cost a little bit. So thank you so much for those donations. Those obviously will go to the very worthy and noble cause of making sure that the animals are really well taken care of. And again, it's a great show of support for the Tennessee Aquarium and the work that we do, and we all appreciate it. All right, Daniel, well, are we likely to see much more activity on the part of Tabasco or now that he's got that Christmas tree? Is he going to be pretty much like a kid on uh, Christmas morning with a toy that they kind of sequester themselves in another room to play with? Yeah, it looks like he's got something that's going to keep his attention. Sometimes we give them certain things and they get bored with it very quickly. But because this is a totally new shape, it's a pretty big thing. Um, I don't think he's going to let go of this Christmas tree for a while. <laughs> All right, well, Danny, I think then that uh, this may be a convenient place for us to go ahead and uh, call an end to this live stream. But I will say one more time to that we really appreciate those of you who have joined us for the live stream. Your participation makes all of this uh, effort worthwhile. We love being able to connect you with the incredible animals here at the Tennessee Aquarium and give you an insight into some species that minus aquariums and zoos, you would probably never have a chance to see, to learn about, and hopefully to learn to care about, and hopefully want to preserve uh, in the wild. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Danny, for thank being- you. Thank you guys for coming and joining us too. You are homo sapien uh, numero uno right now, my friend. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, cut, the, cut the live stream short here. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. We will be back with more of these Holidays Under the Peaks themed live streams throughout the month in the lead up to the holidays. So uh, be sure to keep track of our Facebook page for more info about when the next of those will go live. And again, thank you to those of you who have donated to our Emergency Operations Fund. May you all have a very wonderful weekend. We will see you next time.